The following production is part of the Play Some Video Games podcast network. Before we get into this week's episode of PSVG Prime, we have to take a quick moment. You know, it's probably not going to be a quick moment. I'm going to take time because these people are pretty darn special to us. Huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, especially those producers, Coach Hulk, Edwin Callow, Devin Tyus, Chris M., Kyle Heyman, Josh Barboni, Barry Cathcart, and Paul Calicote. We love you all. Thank you so much for your support and your love each and every week. As a reminder, if you are a member of the Patreon over at patreon.com slash PSVG, this month's giveaway is sponsored by the PlayStation Experience Podcast by Seth and Justin. They added $20 worth of Apex Legends credit to the gift box, if you will. So the winner each month gets to select a prize from that which uh, just as a reminder, does still contain a pretty snazzy black PSVG polo shirt, just in. But for $1 gets you access into the ever entertaining PSVG DLC show, as well as the Patreon exclusive adults rated Kevin hates everything on top of the monthly giveaways. And uh, this week, some people got surprised with our E3 postcards in the mail and some other surprises as well. So you too can join in all the fun over at patreon.com slash PSVG. And now, on to this week's episode of PSVG Prime. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of PSVG Prime, the flagship show of the PSVG Podcast Network. It is I, your host, Kevin, and with me, as always, is not Lucas. A uh, couple couple things happen here, folks. Uh, number one, he he's still trying to figure out the whole breastfeeding with the new baby thing. I keep telling him that you're the dad. You You can't do it. So I don't know why he needs more time to figure out that schedule. It seems really weird to me, but hey, I, I honor my friends. So slumming it with me this week, you might know him from Board of Video Games. You've heard him for at least 90 minutes already this week, if not more. But he's here with me again. Josh, how are we doing? I'm doing great. You could argue I might have podcasted with you on PSVG Prime more than Lucas at this point. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I think so. Not That's not... I mean, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but, you know. But but humble brag. This is what happens when you're the only person available. <laughs> you get to be on a lots of podcasts. <laughs> well, plus we're in the same time zone, which makes things a lot easier than some other people. And yes, we're both generally available around the same time frame at night. So it all kind of works out pretty well. Okay, I get it. I have no life. I hear you, Kevin. <laughs> well, I mean, you're with me, though. I'm saying I have no life either. So it's not really an insult to you if I'm in the same boat, right? That's true. That's yeah. true. I can can you imagine doing this when we were single men? No, because I'd be playing video game for like eight hours straight. <laughs> yeah. Podcast while we play. Well, that could be something. New show. Patreon New show. exclusive, I'm, everybody. I'm on board for that already. <laughs> <laughs> Just talk while we play. Honey, I have to play. Uh, it's part of the podcast. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Sorry. This is an eight hour long podcast. I can't I can't go to bed tonight. Sorry. So I have two episodes of Board of the Video Games. <laughs> <laughs> Make your own joke. I don't even need to make that joke. There you go. It's all good. Um, all right, let's dive in each and every week as we start off with a little bit of what we've been playing. Uh, I'll let you go first because most of the stuff I have on my list I talked about last week, so I don't have too much to contribute to it. So we'll, we'll let you go first. Okay, well, um, let's see. Let's start with Dauntless. Dauntless is this new game that... Uh, uh, nobody can play, including myself. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's it dropped through like Epic Game Store, but technically it's across Epic Games. It's the first, as they say, true crossplay game. Oh um, right, meaning it includes every console it's on. You can play uh, with, and um, everything uh, is cross progression, unlike what Fortnite has going on. 
um, which is kind of what a lot of people were complaining about, I guess, a little bit for like the V Bucks aspect. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I'd say because progression now is cross platform on Fortnite, but you're right. If you purchase currency, the currency isn't cross platform, which yeah. is odd. Yeah. So in this game, technically, if I play on my PC, the next time I pick it up, I can pick it up on my Xbox, and I should have the same progression in the game. Uh, and that's sounds great on paper. So it's on PC, uh, Xbox, PlayStation 4. Um, I've only been able to get into it on my Xbox, and I was only able to get into the tutorial. Oh, I have now spent probably a collective hour in load screens to try and get into the regular game. Uh, and In fact, before we started recording, I jumped on at 8 p.m. Eastern time, to well, 8, 15 Eastern time to try and get a game in before we play, record it so I could talk about it. So I jumped in on the Xbox. It says, like, our servers are full. Your estimated queue time is zero minutes. So I said, okay. So I just wait. Then it, like, upped it to four minutes. So I'm fine. I'm on my phone, like, playing, like, Candy Crush or something. And then I look up, and it says 75-minute wait to get into the server. So I'm like, oh, okay. Close that out. So that leads to the other another game I'm playing. So I started Dead Space 3 uh, based on uh, Discord conversations in our PSVG Discord, uh, a game I didn't really give maybe I'll say a fair shot or <laughs> even a shot. I remember playing it <clears throat> back when it came out, um, but I very vividly remember a specific level that was co-op mm -hmm. and so far i haven't experienced that in my single player playthrough so i don't know if there is a, a different story in the cooperative or not or if i just played a demo um, which mm. is very possible i may have just played a demo of the game uh, before it Maybe. came out yeah i don't remember there being separate stories um but so far uh it holds up graphically pretty well. It's like a screenshot that I'm going to share in the Discord later. Um, and I'm really bummed I slept on this game. I didn't like, I was such a big fan of Dead Space 1 and 2 that I must have been mad uh, when they uh, announced co op. Yeah. For this game for some reason. Um, and the only reason why I'm revisiting it is because um, I don't remember how the conversation came up, but I was either talking about it on board with video games or. In the Discord, it was in the that, Discord that I, you know, thought it was bad. Like they announced it for something, and I was like, "No way, am I going to go back to that?" And someone's like, "Actually, it was really good." And I'm like, "Oh, now I feel silly for not playing it." It'd be like if I didn't play Mass Effect Andromeda, like one of my favorite well, yeah, yeah. trilogies of all time. Not playing Andromeda because I didn't like the concept is essentially why I didn't play Dead Space Three. See, I think I feel like I played like half of Dead Space Three, and I did not like it anywhere near as much as one and two at all. And I'm a, I was a big Dead Space fan too. Yeah, and that's so what I, I might too. be with you. I think maybe I have to go back, but I, I mean, I played a bit of it, and I don't know what it was. It just felt so different than the other ones that I don't know. It just didn't have the same vibe to me. Well, I'll tell you. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to worry about spoilers because the game is <laughs> yeah ten years old. Um, but like you literally started the game, and it reminded me of Lost Planet because you're mm -hmm. in the snow. And I love Lost Planet. And you do this whole mission. It's very short. Um, but you don't realize you're not like you, you do this start of this mission and you get this like package and you slide down this really cool scene where you're sliding down like mm -hmm. almost like an avalanche and you get down and you give the generals down there and he asks, like, you got to give me that thing, blah, blah, blah. And then he shoots you in the head and yep. kills you. Yep. And then he kills himself. And I'm like, oh my god, well, I don't, I don't remember this. And then you go to 200 years later, and you're playing back <laughs> as Isaac Clark. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's really cool. And then like the storyline has like a Game of Thrones feel because it has the this church um, from oh, the yeah. first two games coming after you, and it, it feels like that whole Cersei thing from Game of Thrones. And I was like, why didn't I like this game? <laughs> so I'm enjoying it so far. <laughs> Um, so I've been playing that. Uh, I, I started steam world dig two. Okay. Um, because target screwed up and 
uh, um, on the not Target GameStop uh, did the typical GameStop thing and decided talking uh, to their customers about things instead of well their non customers instead of engaging their customers mm-hmm. uh, kept me from buying Diablo three on the Switch on the Pro Day sale. Uh, so I ended up not buying it and being angry. Uh, so I was gonna get Steam World Dig two, and then um, I was gifted Steam World Dig two by one of our awesome listeners. Um, <laughs> which is funny because I confused Grouchy, Surge, and Trash Turkey on my own podcast. Who was who? And then less than a week later, I'm getting a gift from one of them. <laughs> so. Now you better not screw up Puzu. Yeah. Uh, no, so I'm going to um, – he gifted me Steam World Dig 2, so I'm going to do a um, an audio review for him once I nice. finish it for his podcast. Um, so I started that. I'm enjoying it so, uh, so far, um, but I'm getting to these, you know, old game is old kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I, just, I just finished Steam World Dig about a week ago. I had not played it before, um, and I got it on the Switch for free with my coins. Uh, my whatever they call that, yeah, weird currency. Uh, and I really like that game a lot. It it reminds me. It's like um, Dead Cells Light. Okay. Um, or like like what I imagine like Dig Dug or Spelunky had like a baby and like made this weird game. Yeah, that works though. I'm getting a phone call from Belgium right now. That's interesting. Um, should answer it live. I should answer it. Um, <laughs> So I started Steam World Dig 2, and uh, my first impressions are, wow, it looks a lot better. Mm-hmm. It's very, it's, it's colorful. Um, but I played it a little bit long enough to notice they added a water level, which is like one of my least favorite things. <laughs> Next, I get the bats from Castlevania. Um, so I'm not thrilled about that, but. Uh, I'm enjoying the um, different level up abilities and the different things you can get in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, while it still holds some of its the same parts of Steam World Dig, um, I'm a little worried about where it's going to go if they, if it's going to try to do too much. Um, I might be concerned because I, I really enjoyed the first one a lot because while it was challenging, it was easy. Okay, and like I got through it, I felt accomplished. Um, but it wasn't a brain burner. Like I, I was able to play it in bed for a couple hours a night and be like, Oh, this is fun. And mm-hmm. I finished it. Great. So maybe I like the simplicity. Who knows? Um, and then the last game I'll talk about is, well, probably a game you are going to talk about and that's rage Two. Mm-hmm. I've been playing it on the PS4. Um, what can I say about rage Two? Uh, you you and Donnie talked about it um, last week. Yep. I think I feel similar feelings to you guys. Um, I really enjoy the game. I yes. should say that. It doesn't sound like it by how I'm getting into it. But um, I, I think, like, this isn't a game to get into for the story. No, not at all. However, it is there. There is hmm. story but you had to do some legwork for it. You got to, and read. it's not great either. It's That's my great. other problem. It's not a great story. And you got to read these data pads, mm-hmm. and then you kind of have to listen to um, people talk that you might not be interested in hearing. And one of the things I don't like is you can't really skip the dialogue, like in certain points. Like there'll be a guy just talking to you for minutes. It seems like. No, you can hit the buttons. Can you? Is there a way to skip it? Maybe. Yeah, on Xbox, it's like button. X or something like that, and it makes them just like scroll through. Oh, okay. Maybe the only ones you can't do are like the cutscenes, but if there are ones where you're just statically sitting there, yeah, you can absolutely skip it. Yeah. And if it's and if it's one of like the NPCs that just give you a mission, yeah, like a, a location on a map, you could just keep it next, and even though you never hear a word they say, it'll still say, you know, mission discovered, and it gives you the mission name at the bottom, so you still get all the missions that way. Okay. Without having to listen to them talk, so yeah. <laughs> I find myself like picking my phone up during like long exposition by the characters. Yeah, you should be able to skip most of those. Yeah. Okay. Um, otherwise, like I did have one glitch where, like in the main part, you start off on I would keep going to talk to that girl, mm-hmm. and I would hold in the button to talk to her, and then she just wouldn't say anything. And that was frustrating because I'm like, well, am I, am I missing something? 
Um, but who knows? Uh, I'm not like Donnie said that happened to him and he had to like restart the mission. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I like how big the world is. And I like that um, I can just go do a bunch of missions yeah. and then go back to where I'm supposed to. Um, and like, I like some of the big giant boss yeah. fights. Yeah, like, those are fun. It's very cool. Um, but I can also see why people are frustrated with it as well. Um, and it's definitely not the game that was uh, um, advertised to us, as Donnie said. It's not this crazy, epic, balls to the wall shooter. Well, it definitely has those elements. I don't really think you see that until you unlock all of your abilities. Yes, 100%. And even then, it's, you know, it's still not as nuts as they said. No, and the, wor- fine. the world too. So like inside the cities, the world is very alive. But as you go on these missions, like every trailer you saw, it made it sound like every, you know, corner of the map was like bristling with activity and stuff like that. It's really not. And it's a wasteland, yeah. so it's okay. Like I'm fine with it, but you're right. The, the advertising made it seem like there's always stuff going on. And there's definitely not. There, there's there's down points for sure. Uh, you know, throughout the game. But you're right. Like I'm I'm obviously further than you are because I've been playing it a lot longer, but yeah, some of the abilities and stuff and the weapons you get, like you can pull off some crazy ridiculous combos, but it's like, I don't have to either. I can just go in guns blazing and take down everybody. Like I rarely have to use an ability, but I can. So they're fun to have, but not essential for the gameplay at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. And like, unless you want to stop by every little like bandit encampment you drive yep. by, uh, which usually is pointless because there's nothing there to get. Um, that's really the only like eventful things that are happening in the map. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's that's about it. I'm going to talk about some board games on Board of the Video Games next week, so uh, I'll leave that stuff for that. But um, I'm jealous of one of the games that you've been able to play. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's it for now. All right. Well, I said my piece on Rage 2. Like I said, I still stand by uh, what I said last week. I'm further in the story now. But like I said, I'm nearing the end of it. I can tell like the story is kind of starting to wrap up. So I'm still just doing like literally everything on the map, which uh, as you get farther along, you'll probably discover some of it is a bit daunting to go from like, hey, you're over on this far left side of the map. And now you have this mission on the far right side of the map as you get farther in the game. And you're like, well, there's no fast (laughs) travel points in a lot of this. So I guess I'm just driving for 10 minutes or, you know, you do get um a flying vehicle at one point you can utilize as well uh, a little bit, which is pretty fun, but you can't shoot from it. So it kind of takes away some of that fun too. So uh, there are ways around it, but for sure, I think I strongly recommend this game. It's one of the most fun experiences I've had so far this year, at least, but I can totally say to somebody, you don't need to pay 60 for it. You can wait for like a 30, $40 sale and still have a ton of fun playing it. Just like I said, don't expect much out of the story. It's there. It's fine. It's just uh, really where the game shines is its gunplay and, and mechanics are, are what really make it stand out. Um, the other game I'm still playing is Shakedown Hawaii. Uh, Donnie had a lot of issues with it, I guess, kind of gripes that he was picking at last week. Uh, a patch came out uh, either yesterday or today as we we're recording, so sometime last week as you're hearing this, um, and it's addressed a lot of those issues Donnie had. Uh, the Jason X reported he was having something too where guns were disappearing. Um, they released patches for stuff like that. Uh, ability to the cops are much harder to shake now. That was one of the things Donnie said. Like, <laughs> well, you, you could just mow everybody over, and the cops are really easy to lose and stop. Well, that difficulty is ramped up a, a bit too. So you can still fight the cops, but it's it gets to be like GTA after a while, where it's like, yeah, they bring out everything. You don't have much choice to survive at that point. Um, so I'm still having a lot of fun with that. Love the city management aspect of it, but I can see how it's getting to be almost a bit too much for some people. So I think if you're not into that type of aspect and you just want to play like an old school GTA two, um, this is fine, but you're not going to get a whole lot of it. A lot of the game is around these side missions and stuff you do to expand your empire, uh, that aren't necessarily, um, story missions per se. And the last thing I'll talk about, which is what Josh was envious of, is uh, I can talk about it. I just can't show anything (laughs) from it, apparently, (laughs) as far as I can tell. Uh, I am beta testing Mario Kart World Tour on my Android device. That was the only place you can play it right now. And you had to sign up for it. And even then, you didn't necessarily get into it. Because I know a lot of people in our community signed up for it. And I think only like three or four of us are actually playing it um, between staff and listeners. Um, 
it's fun. I, I will say this. I've seen a lot of articles about it saying like, hey, it's great when they're not trying to nickel and dime you and stuff like that. And I can say, honestly, this doesn't have much in my mind in the in microtransactions. I think it's the first thing I wonder, like, well, how much is the game going to cost? I'm pretty sure based on what I'm playing, the game is going to be free to play. Uh, there are emeralds you can buy that are premium currency, and those will allow you to randomly pull um, new characters, carts, or gliders um, out of a pipe. Basically, you, you shoot them out of a pipe and you get a random thing. So it is like a loot box. You don't know what you're going to get. Uh, you may get doubles because if you get doubles, it ranks up that character or vehicle or glider. Um, so there is that aspect to it, but it certainly hasn't kept me from playing it. Um, they give you enough energy that you can play a couple races without stopping at all, which I really, on my phone, I don't want to play like more than maybe like three or four races at a time before I want to put it down anyway. So it's not like I'm playing 10 races and I'm like, I have no energy. I need to spend money. Comes back quick too. Um, <laughs> as for how it works. So for those interested, you, you start the game and you get a random character uh, shot out right away that you start with. And that's your character you have. Uh, the more races you do and the better you place, your character levels up. The premise of the game is to not only win races, but also to score points. And points are scored by your position each lap. So if you're in first place, you get more points for that first lap, and then you complete in first place, you get more points. Um, Jumps, you get points for jumps. You get points for power sliding. Uh, You get points for hitting opponents with weapons and and traps and stuff like that. Um, And then you get points for your, your character, the level they are, the level your car is and the level your glider is. So those are the three main aspects of the game is character, glider, car, and you level all those up individually and you could switch those for each race. Now, certain races will give you more perks depending on the type of race. So if you're like playing the Luigi's mansion race, you get bonuses. If you play as Luigi with certain cars with certain gliders. Um, so all those things kind of compound into being a higher score record. Uh, you are playing against real people, so it's not um, computers or bots. You're playing against actual players every time you hop in. Uh, so that brings a different fun and kind of unpredictability to it. You know, it's not like you're like, hey, I'm going to figure out how to do this race perfect. I'm going to win every time. Well, you're playing against other people that may be doing the same thing or things slightly different. So uh, it is watered down, but I don't think that comes to a surprise for me. But apparently for some people it did. I'm like, I, I wasn't expecting a... <laughs> a switch experience. I wasn't even expecting like an SNES experience on my phone, to be honest. Um, it is, you can do touch control. You can do gyro. The weird thing is, is you're holding your phone though. Uh, vertically. Right. There is no horizontal mode, which in my mind would have been the easier way to play it. But it's simply because as you're holding your phone up, you're using just one thumb to slide left and right. And that's basically how you steer. And if you just want to go straight, you can take your finger off the phone completely and your character will just go straight. Uh, you tap to launch an item. Um, you slide down if you want to throw an item behind you, just like you would with Switch. And that's really it. Like, you're just racing. It's a very watered-down mode. But they've had tons of courses so far, um, ranging from, you know, SNES to N64 to um, Game Boy Advance and 3DS stages I've seen so far. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, and they're pretty authentic you know, they seem to be slightly shortened or maybe it's just there were short tracks because of the age of those tracks. I don't really remember, um, but it's good. It's fun. I'm having a lot of fun playing it. I don't know long term if I would keep this like game on my phone for, you know, like a year, like some other games that I play consistently. But it is definitely fun and worth checking out, especially if it's going to be free to play. I think a lot of people have fun with this for a couple months. Um, looks like they're adding more characters and stuff as they go on these different challenges each month. Like there's sets of challenges that even say like beta. Uh, challenge one beta challenge two so i think there's a lot that they can do to keep people hooked and playing like oh you can get this new car you can get this new whatever um but yeah it doesn't seem like they're really trying to force you to pay for anything you can if you want to but it's not pay to win and it's not really you know making you to pay to keep playing the game if you really enjoy it so i'm okay with it completely it's it's better than i was probably actually expecting um so i'll keep reporting on it uh the the beta goes for a couple weeks so i'll get some hands on time with it more but i'm playing for like two two days now and I'm enjoying it. So nice. Yeah. All right. Well, we didn't ask, but people felt the need to send us some messages this week. So let's <laughs> check out the messages. Message for you, sir. And the message comes from boss man, Donnie. So we can't ignore him. We are contractually obligated to address his questions whenever he asks. Otherwise he basically fires us. 
because we have bad managers that got us crappy contract deals. Um, Donnie wants to know, what do you think Netflix could be bringing to E3? And do you think this can work? And what's your perfect world Netflix adaptation of a game? So for those of you who may not be familiar, uh, Netflix has teased that they will be at E3 and game announcements are coming. So we know they've done a couple of games based on Stranger Things already. Uh, And then you could also even take their own stuff that they put on Netflix as potential games. So they had the Black Mirror Bandersnatch, which was a choose your own adventure. Um, And they did a Minecraft story mode as well. So those are both stories that could potentially be skewed as saying these are games. Um, I feel like uh, (laughs) it's tough. I don't know what they're going with. Um. They said the name of the panel that they're going to present at the Coliseum uh, is bringing your favorite shows to life, developing Netflix originals into video games. So for me, it sounds like more of the Black Mirror Bandersnatch type engagements where it's like a choose your adventure thing. Um, But I mean, they have a lot of original material they could do uh, games with. So I know, Josh, you did the Black Mirror, correct? I I didn't do Mm -hmm. it. <clears throat> yes. So, so what was what was your experience like? Would you want more things like this, or you know, before we answer Donnie's question, kind of what's your experience with them so far? Well, there's there are more. There's a Puss in Boots one from Shrek. There's um, that Bear Grylls one that just came out. Oh. Um, and yeah, essentially, they're the equivalent of modern day choose your own adventure. So. I think I think the the main thing that is the most interesting to me as a like a, a movie buff is the production value, okay. the production of this thing. So like Bandersnatch, um, you could argue the story is a, le- a lesser Black Mirror episode. Um, okay, but when you take into account how much production went into it. I would argue it's probably better than a regular Black Mirror episode because they're literally filming this um, with room for improvisation because you could literally make that a scene if something gets improv. There's parts of that episode where um, people say it like famously uh, online, even in interviews with people who have watched it, they're like, look at the family photo twice because like you look at it once and something happens and then you just assume that if you repeat that, the same thing is going to happen. Well, no, something different happens if you look at the family photo twice, but maybe not if you choose something else twice, the same thing might just happen. There's literally a part in Bandersnatch where you can make a choice where the character realizes he is in a Netflix film. And it is addressed <laughs> in a scene with his um, therapist. There's a scene where you can have a, a Matrix-esque martial arts fight with your therapist. There's some crazy stuff they throw in there. But you could also play this movie. I did quotes around play for the listeners. <laughs> um, you can, quote, play this movie as a regular movie. If you're so, if you're in tune with how the plot is moving, okay, yeah, you could you could play this to fulfill a this you know movie, or you could go off the rails, and I hmm. really like that um, because essentially you you're living a telltale movie, and unfortunately, there's going to be a point in our video game lives where you won't use telltale to describe something just because they're gone. Yeah. But it's a real bummer that that happened because that, that could be a verb or Mm -hmm. a verbiage. Like it should be, um, uh, because they redefined what choose your own adventure is. And I think that that's what you see with, um, to kind of circle back around to like Donnie's like thing. You think that, like when you read Netflix's statement, you read them as like they said to bring Netflix originals to video game form. And you think of it as the choose your own adventure. Mm-hmm. I, I think of it as the opposite. Okay. Because I look at this stranger things game 
And I think it looks terrible. I'll just get that out of the way. But the way that they said what they said makes me believe they want to get into the gaming industry. But if they're thinking just 8-bit games are going to be their way in, I think that's going to be a problem. Yeah, Agreed. And, and that they should stick to the choose your own adventure style shows because that would work better for them um, okay. because anyone like my parents can watch Bandersnatch and, and quote unquote play it mm -hmm. uh, with their any remote, but it's going to be, you can have a, a harder time getting my parents to go buy stranger things three on any platform. I agree. Uh, I think that they should stick to to that aspect of it. Um, and I think it can work. I think the kid market is like huge for them. So like Minecraft adventures, the Puss and Boots thing was super big for them. Apparently, uh, even though they don't release their numbers, <laughs> they say it was big for them. Um, but I think that's cool. Like, and it also teaches kids about choice and freedom of choice. Mm. Um, and it adds that replayability. Like I, I can tell you, I can't tell you how many times I've watched The Grinch with my, you know, my kid on, on Netflix because he loves it. But if I could watch it, and different things happen each time, it's gonna make it a lot <laughs> sure. better for parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that makes sense. I, the the eight bit thing, I I agree with you a hundred percent. I think, hopefully, that's not the case of what they're trying to do because I think that really even in itself only works for stranger things simply because of its time frame and nostalgia thing. Um, yeah. I, I, I'd like to see more of the choose your own adventure stuff. I haven't done any of them yet and I'm, I'm guilty even admitting that, but I think that's more appealing to me to be like, Oh, well I can do this. And I honestly didn't know they did a puss in boots one or any, or any other ones. I just only knew of Minecraft and, and that black mirror one. Yeah. Um, so they're not even doing a good job of marketing it out there. I think cause my, my daughter watches Netflix all the time. Um, I think there's more, to gain from that um, aspect. Cause you could do it with basically any franchise, any narrative you want to do. And, and you know, you want to do a chilling adventures of Sabrina, go ahead. You can do one for that. Like, you know, there's all these different angles you could take where they basically could make things like until dawn into yeah. an actual movie. And it, it could play the exact same way, essentially, except you're not moving the people around uh, and it could be really engaging and do some really cool things. And I think black mirror especially is super ripe for that because every story is its own story it doesn't need to be continuing narrative uh that are easier to to digest in small in small bites um but i i also i'm torn calling those games right. so like i i get you're playing it but it's choose your own adventure like there's no yeah, yeah, i don't know that that's getting into what's a game and that that opens up a, a pandora's box for a lot of gamers and discussion like is a cell phone game a game and this and that i, I don't mean it in that way just to me i consider it more to be interactive movie yes. versus a, a game but i'm okay with that they can call it whatever they want but yeah i don't know it could work ideally what i'd love them to see them do and they'll, they'll never do simply because they can't is do like a game based on like altered carbon or you know yeah. things like that but the, here's the problem netflix you look at their library everything gets canceled so they would never be able to put out a game while a show was still in production based on what they do. Yeah. Like, cause a game development takes a year or two or more, depending on what you're doing from zero to, to things. So unless they take an existing game, slap a, you know, the title on it and just reskin it to be something that was on Netflix. They never keep any of their, their shows going long enough. Like you can't do a house of cards one. You can't do orange <laughs> well, is the new black. You can't do like, I mean, anything they put out gets canceled. Yeah. So even if they wanted to do like an umbrella Academy game, Okay, they're renewed for season two. We know that, but is it going to go on beyond that? We have no idea. Like, so you yeah. can't really make a game and then have it come out a year after the show's been canceled. What's the what's the appeal then for for people to buy on that name? You, you know? might be on to Altered Carbon though. They could totally do a video game on Altered Carbon, right? But isn't that just Deus Ex? I mean, essentially kind it of. is. Yeah. Um, but they could. Maybe maybe Square Enix does have something to show us I, at E3. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they could do they could do something on their IPs um, that they're that they're going to keep running. Um, obviously, like they can't do Daredevil, Jessica Jones. Right, Cage. right. That's what first um, came to my head, and I'm like, and no, those would be great. Happen. Those that would be oh, yeah. like a great idea. Um, but Netflix is really good at keeping things secret. 
sure. especially movies that are about to drop. So we could see something uh, that is a surprise, like Bright or Altered Carbon or a new movie they have coming out. Um, because they have they signed all these big actors to deals like years ago. That's true. For films that we don't even know what they're going to be. The only question that I would have is, like, did they take the time to find a good developer? Right. And, like, it seems unlikely. It doesn't seem like they are willing to invest as much money into a video game, which is what they would need to do to mm-hmm. get a good one. Yeah. As they do into their into their films, so. Um, and I feel like if they did, it would have leaked already. Like somebody would know, like, hey, EA is working on this. Like it wouldn't be a secret. Yeah. Like yeah. on that end. But. Yeah. So I mean, I guess to answer his question, um, as far as do you think this can work? I think no. <laughs> yeah. But I don't. I mean, they could surprise us, but I really don't see their E three presentation as a gaming presentation. I think of it as more of a interactive movie presentation. Yeah, I I agree. And and that's a tough question too. Diane's like, can it work? Well, unless they're trying to sell us a game, like in stranger things three, no, I don't think that's going to be financially a success for them. But I mean, who knows? They're, they're not financially successful anyway. Now as it is like, I don't know why people still keep in giving Netflix money to make this stuff when they're not making money (laughs) back. I, I don't understand how wall street works apparently, but if they just make more of this content to put on their service, well, how do they gauge what success is that is like, would they consider black mirror Bandersnatch a success? Cause I think a lot of people, I think more people played that than normally watch black mirror. So do they consider that a success? Then, then maybe like if they did a stranger things, choose your own adventure one. Okay. I'm pretty sure everybody would go through and play that. So they might gauge, gauge that being successful. If they keep it just to their Netflix platform and not try to sell us something, I think it might be in air quotes, successful for them but i think if they try and actually get into the publishing area and say all right here's this game for sixty dollars thirty dollars forty dollars whatever it is i think they're gonna have a rude awakening with a lot of what they could possibly offer in the time frames they work with yeah all right donnie let's get off our back we answered your question man (laughs) now it's time to move on to the news of the week i'm commander shepherd and this is my favorite news outlet on the Citadel. It was an interesting segue. You had Josh talking about Telltale. Yeah. Telltale's in the news again. Yeah, and who that? <laughs> yeah. Valve recently removed the option to buy Telltale developed series Tales from the Borderlands on Steam. And Good Old Games announced it would no longer be selling any of Telltale's games starting May 27th. But nobody really seems to know why um customer relations representatives have posted to saying sadly we need to inform you that due to the company's closure all remaining telltale titles will be delisted from their catalog on may 27th uh, over on uh, good old games but nobody seems to say like why that is like why just because they're closed why wouldn't it still live on and they could still make money somehow or somebody would make money from it um, you know, all the games going, The Wolf Among Us, Guardians of the Galaxy, Batman, Telltale series, they're all just being taken down. And we just don't understand why. Um, with the exception of Tales of the Borderlands, all the rest of the games are available on Steam right now. We don't know if that's going to change as well. Um, and Gearbox has kind of said that Borderlands 3 story will pick up where the events of Tales from the Borderlands left off. So it's really weird if you can't somehow get people to play that that maybe didn't play it as a segue to lead up to Borderlands 3, which is going to be one of the bigger games, I think, being released this year, to be honest, as far as like AAA, you know, blockbuster games like that. That's high up on this list right now. Um, so all prior digital purchases of games are, of course, be honored and supported, they're saying, but they're not inclined to elaborate why they're being removed so once again just kind of another scary thing to see when we're kind of being forced slowly into this digital revolution like hey you just download the games you're fine mm. that at any point those games could go away and you you know people you know still clamor onto their playstation 4s that have pt on it like and that was a demo for a game that never came out um but imagine having this full library of like all the telltale games and to be like oh by the way those are just gone now you have nothing yeah. to be able to do like you delete it from your computer it's gone like I, I don't know like it's it's very weird 
just scary thought that like, okay, we're moving to an all digital platform in a lot of cases. And I mean, even if you have something like game pass or um, PlayStation now, like any, any of those, the streaming ones or subscription ones, the titles revolve and people don't always kind of talk about it. Like, Hey, this game was announced. It's coming to game pass. Okay, cool. And you have in the back of your head, like, oh, I'm going to get to that game at some point and you start playing rage Two, And then, you know, Wolfenstein comes out and then you got to go back and finish this other game. You didn't finish dead space three, you know, and you go to boot up game pass to pay that game months ago. You want to do and Oh, by the way, it's gone. Yeah. So it's like, eh, well, it's almost like you have to drop everything when something's announced and play it in hopes that it won't go away. Unless it's a, you know, first party game on, on PlayStation or, or Xbox to keep those on there, but anything else could be gone. Yep. And, you know, yes, they may come back someday, but they're not really there, even though you're kind of semi paying for it. So just another scary, you know, reality behind the digital revolution, just another weird story from telltale that I don't know if we're ever going to get all the details as to what happened with them. It's, it's a very strange story that still continues affecting the rest of the gaming uh, ecosphere. It's, it's interesting. So, like you can go into Steam or or G- Galaxy of Games as folks supposed to call it. <laughs> yep. Um, and you can buy you can buy X Wing versus Tie Fighter, mm-hmm. like a game that came out thirty years ago. Yep. <laughs> um, I think what's interesting about this is the first thing that came to mind is uh, for Telltale with this is n- wow, nobody has bought their library from them. That has to be what it is. They're out of business. Yeah. No one bought their their catalog because if if they yeah. did, they would still be selling them, and someone else would be making a profit. Like, so now is the question: Did Telltale refuse to sell their catalog, and they like they're responsible for these games going away? Or Which would be crazy too. You were think they, they want asking money. too much money because they are trying <sighs> yeah. to recuperate losses? It's really interesting, and you're right. I think exactly what you said. We'll never really know what happened with Telltale Games because this is truly bizarre. Mm -hmm. While we are in this digital revolution, we're supposed to be at this point where nothing is truly gone. While you might not own it forever, nothing is truly gone. Right. Now, like I could put my copy of X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter in my PC, and I could play it. But if I wanted to play with you, I would have to buy you that game. Mm-hmm. But if if LucasArts closed and they never sold the license to that game, you might never be able to do that. Yeah. Unless I illegally burned a copy and sent it to you, which we could do that. But you can't do that with Telltale Games. <laughs> it's true. So it is interesting. And I'm wondering because I know like The Walking Dead is on iPhone and other mm-hmm. things. I'm wondering if that's the same for um phones as well because uh it's really bizarre and if it is a case of them not selling their catalog i'm wondering if they ever will and who who will buy it because you want to talk about um a good marketing campaign imagine like microsoft or sony coming out and saying we own exclusive rights to all telltale games and we're going to release them and like Ooh. a collection, you know, like yeah. even, you know, there's a lot of people who still haven't played telltale games. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm still playing the gardens of the galaxy one. I haven't played through it. Yeah. Uh, and I stopped walking dead like mid season two. So, I mean, Me there's too. a lot I haven't played <laughs> and it's, but you're right. It's all out there and it's stuff. I totally would play, but it's just not always on the, the highest priority. I did check on Android. Uh, Cause I know you still have an iPhone and I looked and, and all the telltale games are still listed on the Google play store. So including tales from the borderlands. So they're not pulled from there yet. But um, I could be coming. Yeah. And it doesn't have, so for walking dead, it's only has a new frontier season two and Michonne. That's all they have. Okay. So yeah. So one and three missing. Yeah. But they have the two Batman, they have Guardians of the Galaxy, they have Wolf Among Us, and they have Tales from Borderlands. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, it's weird. All right, moving on. We're going to skip around a little bit because I think there's one story I think we have a lot of meat to talk about. So we're going to jump ahead and go down to some Switch news that I don't think was talked about on Shaq. I don't know. No, because some of them were announced today. Which one, um, Shaq or Flex Deposed? Shaq's Deposed. <laughs> um. DC Universe Online is coming to the Nintendo Switch. 
Hooray. That's right. You might say, hey, that sounds familiar. What's that game from? Yep. It's that same game that launched in 2011 on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. Uh, it's basically a MMO that you get to play through as a character you create, either a hero or villain, um, and you run through Gotham City, Metropolis, so on and so forth. Uh, it is a free-to-play game uh, that does have expansions, including some that they actually still did this year, which I didn't even know that they were still yeah. supporting this game. I thought it was just they pulled the plug on it. Apparently, they haven't. Um, they've done Justice League Dark stuff. Um, Teen Titans stuff was added you know, last year. So, I mean, they, they continually do stuff. Um, but if you want to have all this additional stuff, it's $14.99 a month. Yeah. Which seems like a lot um, in a world in a world <laughs> where you have things like Apex and and Fortnite that gives you a season's worth of content, you know, three or four months for like ten bucks yeah. to be like fourteen ninety nine a month for expansions that you if you don't continue your subscription you don't get that expansion anymore. That seems odd to me. Like, how does that work? And do you want to go back and play this game? Like, I remember playing this on PS3, and it was interesting for a very brief period of time, I think, for me. And then once they started throwing all the money stuff in my face, like, hey, if you want to be this character, this cost $20. It was always, like, these really crazy numbers they'd throw out for a game that was, like, mediocre at best, I think. Uh, yeah. It seems like an odd thing to be ported to the Switch, but, you know, people apparently only port crap games to the Switch right now. <laughs> anyway, so I guess it fits the the model there but i don't know it almost has me intrigued enough to download it and then I, if i recall it was a massive file on my ps3 i'm like i don't know if my switch even has enough storage to put this thing on here because i remember it being fairly large it's a huge file it, it updates every, it seemingly seemingly every day you launch it yeah. uh, i can't imagine the file size on the switch and it would it would be constantly updating um yeah, it was like a poor man's City of Heroes, which was a game yeah. I used to play on the PC. And uh, it, I don't know, for me, it never really did justice for, oh, that's a little pun uh, unintentionally. Injustice it was, uh, you say? <laughs> it did a little injustice to the DC universe. Um, <clears throat> it was, it even when I was playing on the PS4, it didn't run well. Mm -hmm. uh, it was super buggy. Uh, it didn't feel great in my hands, like controller-wise. It's just really bizarre that they're uh, adding this to the Switch. Um, and I don't know. I guess, like, maybe they're trying to capitalize on the Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Like, if if Gazillion, uh, the company Gazillion wasn't shut down, who did um, the Marvel online yeah. game, which was awesome. It was. It was a lot better. <laughs> um, uh, maybe this wouldn't happen, but. Maybe it would have already been on the Switch, but I don't see a game like this being successful on the Switch just simply because of the data, like how mm -hmm. much storage it uses. Um, and like you said, it didn't run well, so I can't imagine it running well on Switch. Like I imagine it would run worse. On the right. Yeah, it has to. So, I mean, I don't know. You can play Destiny on one of, a, a terrible computer, but it doesn't mean it's a good experience. So I imagine. It's just this is just going to do worse things for DC's image. <laughs> this is true, and just when you thought it couldn't get worse, like hold my beer, because people don't know, people don't understand. They just see, oh my god, I get to play DC Universe online. I'm going to do this, and then like, oh god, this is terrible. <laughs> now I know why it's free to play. Um, so going from bad to good, though, uh, a new trailer came out from Marvel Marvel's Ultimate Alliance three, as you mentioned, uh, came out today. So yes, Shaq couldn't have talked about this stuff. Um, more X Men are coming, which is cool. We don't get to see a lot of X-Men right now due to the whole kind of weird situation they're in other than really bad movies that Fox is putting out <laughs> that hopefully will get better now that Disney fully owns them. Um, a handful of X-Men were already confirmed for this game anyway. Of course, Wolverine, uh, Nightcrawler, and Storm, which is awesome. But new gameplay footage today uh, shows Psylocke and Beast in action, which is pretty awesome to see Psylocke, who's kind of underutilized in a lot of these games. Yeah. Um, you also see Cyclops and Colossus, um, but not in a playable form, at least yet. I can't imagine... You don't have Cyclops in an X-Men game. That's almost like not having Wolverine, I guess. I mean, I'm okay if Cyclops doesn't appear. Oh, I'm okay, too. I don't <laughs> like Cyclops, but it's just weird if he's not yeah, no, there, he is what I'm saying. Um, and it seems like Magneto will also be um, playable, but it's not sure. No, look, sorry. Magneto looks to be 
playable, but we're not sure if Mystique and Juggernaut, who are also shown, were going to be playable characters as well. Um, which, once again, Juggernaut, Mystique, whatever. I mean, what's Mystique's ability? She turns into somebody else and fights. Like, yeah. I mean, well, she doesn't she has have no powers too. Right. Yeah. So we shall see. But yeah. yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff with this game. It looks to be getting better and better. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's out July 19th for those that are interested only on the Nintendo Switch, which I'm sure Nintendo will talk about a lot at E3. I can't wait to play this with everyone in our community and and PSVG. It's like it's four days after my birthday. I'll be on the beach, so I won't have my Switch probably. I don't know that I have Wi-Fi, right? but I'll be getting it at least. Um, And like, I don't think... It's a surprise that I've talked about how much I love Ultimate Alliance as mm-hmm. a series. Um, but I was thinking, so so I play a game on my phone called Mar- Marvel Strike Force, and yep. they just announced um, Psylocke and Colossus are joining the game. They oh, really? haven't joined yet. <laughs> so it's interesting that, that that happened around the same time. Um, but like, I just think back to those games and how much fun I had. So I'm just so excited and I watched a video today, like a Venom and Electro boss fight. Oh, nice. Uh, they showed where you're fighting against Venom and Electro combo. Ooh. And um, they like switch off, like Electro fights you, then Venom comes in and just like slimes you. <laughs> um, but it looks great. I can't wait um, to, to get in and, and play with everybody because uh, just one of, the, one of the best four player fighting experiences I've had. In, my gaming life agreed and maybe donnie will play it for more than a week so you can actually play with everybody well we'll yeah i mean i'll play with you and kyle I'll and, be playing. and occasionally yeah. donnie and maybe jason if he's around <laughs> that's true that's true Luke, well, Lucas look is of this too i think too lucas so. has two kids he's not doing anything forever <laughs> yeah but you can play at night when we play it'll work it'll work um so yeah i'm excited for that one last story i want to cover tonight and this one i, I saw the story initially and i just kind of read it and i was like ah, eh, this isn't anything and then i actually read into it i was like this is a lot more serious than i thought it was uh josh are you familiar with tifu no okay. but i'm familiar with who he works for right so tifu is part of phase clan who is an esports uh team who i regularly root for when they're playing uh basically in any competition there. And I kind of always root for them, whether it's, you know, Counter-Strike or, you know, Fortnite or anything else like Call of Duty, Black Ops, PUBG, the whole nine. That's kind of my go-to team. So like Kyle watches, you know, his Overwatch League and he has his teams. This is my team in esports. And Tifu is widely regarded as, I don't want to say one of the best. I'm saying he is the best Fortnite player out there. Uh-huh. Um, the guy is an animal. If you watch his videos, just highlight reels, like he can't be touched. Um, and he actually, uh, has, he's the most watched Fortnite streamer on Twitch. Suck it. Ninja Tifu is better than Ninja. So I can, I can have confidence in there too. Um, 21 years old has won hundreds of thousand dollars in prize money. Most watched, uh, Fortnite streamer on Twitch, um, world cup qualifiers, you know, have him on there beating out Ninja. Everybody else is on there. YouTube channel, the whole nine. He's got everything going on for him. Signed. This was last year in 2018. Signed a contract with FaZe Clan. Um, and this was before he was really super well known. Now he's blown up and he's kind of almost outshines FaZe Clan entirely. Like way more people know him than know FaZe uh, as far as his following. Um he signed a three-year deal with FaZe Clan, so he's basically locked in them until 2021, right? Yep. Here's the contract, though. Now, because he was young, he's a 20-year-old kid signing this contract saying, hey, we'll give you money and, and post you up on the most famous you know, esports team. This is where his contract fell through. He can only keep 20% of revenue from branded videos. That's crazy up to 50% of his touring and appearance fees. So if he's paid to show up at an event, they take half. They can claim up to 80% of a finder's fee if they bring deals to the table. So if they say, hey, we got you this sponsorship with G Fuel yeah. for 100 grand, he only gets 20 grand. They get 80 grand. Yep. Um, and basically this bull you know shoehorns him into this weird position 
and they can actually keep him from pursuing things that are deemed conflict of interest. So if, if G fuel sponsors phase claim, which actually they do. So that's a weird example I gave, but they do. And he wants to sign a more lucrative deal with C4. Yeah. He, they can say, no, you cannot do that. Yeah. Even though he's not making money off G fuel, that's a phase sponsorship, not just him sponsorship. He is prevented from doing so due to this contract, which that one's I guess isn't as weird when you look at certain people. Uh, it, it makes sense. Like if your if your sports team is sponsored by Reebok, you can't have a Nike contract or something like this. So I guess that makes sense. But everything else is like this guy is known for his Fortnite videos, his Fortnite plays, but he can't. Well, he can monetize his streams, but he basically gets only twenty percent of his work simply because they gave him that moniker just because Phase Clan is attached to his name. Yeah which is nuts. And this sets up a terrible precedent in what is kind of booming into esports. Like we see, you know, I, I found out my daughter's high school has an esports team. Yeah. And I was like, hello, number one, how am I not the coach of this thing? <laughs> uh, number two, this nuts. it's not like it's a club. Like they legit are competing against other schools and tournaments. And there's like state championship esports team. Like that is, that's nuts to me. Uh, colleges are giving out scholarships now for esports. Like this is building up much like, uh, Coach Hulk and Dev talk a lot about college athletes not being able to monetize off their abilities and how that's not fair. You know, the same thing's going to happen to these kids. And if they quit and decide to become a private, like with phase clan, something like that, this is kind of the precedence. Like it's okay to have this contract right now. Like that, it, this is the precedence. Like he's the most famous person. How on earth would you ever get a contract better than what he has when he is the most famous person on the squad? Right. It, it, it's hard to say, like you're not going to get a better deal than Tom Brady like on the Patriots team, but you may be better, but like you're certainly not going to get that better contract. So it's like, I, I don't understand how you could be so underpaid for what you do in this thing. That's becoming more and more common and mainstream. And you're just kind of getting screwed out of your money. Well, I mean, <clears throat> Tom Brady does have a, the worst contract of all quarterbacks. Like <clears throat> I, I, I totally agree with you that like, this isn't fair to him, but I can't help, but, but, know that he signed a contract and if he didn't read the contract or he didn't think he would like exceed or surpass his his skills that the contract are like you could have sat down with the like uh smooth talking lawyers like listen you're just a kid you you know you're gonna do things in your life we're gonna give you some money don't read the fine print. And he's like, okay, I'm happy to do this. Right. I'm doing what I love. I'm playing video games. But well, I think what he's doing is good because he probably knows he can't get out of his contract. But something he does say is he wants this to be like a message to everyone else his age and people like doing this to like be careful about like what they're signing and what they're doing. So he could be like, not a martyr is not a great word for this, but the equivalent of that, like he could right. be this person who is leading the way for future contracts because esports is only getting bigger. Uh-huh. And maybe when he signed this contract, it what you know, it well, it definitely wasn't it, no, as big as it is now, regardless of whether it was six months ago or six years ago. Like it has exponentially become more important. But yeah, it's things for for him because he's doing so much for the, for esports. He's doing so much for G for face clan, you know, for everything he does. Um, it stinks for him. But if you send that contract, you, you have to fulfill that contract. Yes. Like, and that's, that's, just that's what his you point. have to do. Yeah. He's trying to negotiate out of it right now and trying to actually like counter sue or come up with a plan. So like his exact quote is, is kind of exactly in lines of what you just said. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is just serve justice to the esports community. The esports industry he says these kids are getting ripped off. They're being taken advantage of. There's tons of people in contracts this bad, just like myself. And yeah. I'm the first person to stand up and say, this is not okay. Um, he's been trying to basically get released from his contract. Um, phase has kind of basically said they're adamant about keeping him at all costs. They don't care. Like he yeah. can bring all his bad press. They're not going to let him out of the contract. And he just looks to being, looks like he's just trying to get out of it at this point and just be able to do his own thing. But yeah, it's, it's crazy how something that, you know, a year ago, Hey kid, you want to make a hundred grand? He's like, heck yeah. And then he realizes he could have made. Some 
awesome thing. Like just streamed on Twitch, had this name. People would have noticed eventually like, man, this guy's incredible. Like he's leagues above anybody else. He would have gotten there anyway. And now it's like, he's stuck in something for three years, which in esports that could be a really long time. A lot of these guys don't age well. You hate to say it, but the reflexes go down. Something yeah. like that like Dr. Disrespect is, is old, really old in, in the streaming community. And it's, he's not the best. He is great, but it's more because of his gimmick and his persona that he puts on. He's entertainment versus actual skill level, where somebody like Tifu is more just about the skill. He's not necessarily entertaining to watch. Is like he's not putting on a show for us. He's just right. playing the game. He's just really good at it. In one month, Ninja makes more than this guy makes in a year, and he brings in more viewers than Ninja. Yep, which is that, I guess I guess that that that's a great way to sum it up and end this story. Is actually on that note right there is that. <laughs> You're right. Somebody who can't hold a candle to it and, and technically isn't even a professional um, player. He's just a professional streamer is making more money doing the same exact thing, even though he can play circles around him. Yeah. But yeah. You're right. <laughs> that is nuts. That is nuts. Well, I think that wraps up this week's show there, Josh, where could people find you and all the other shenanigans you're up to on a regular basis? Uh, you know, well, when does this come out? It won't be as well, it might be a surprise. <clears throat> I'll be on this upcoming PSVG DLC. So that should be exciting. I have <laughs> a embarrassing story ready to tell. And you know, you can find me normally on board with video games. Everybody knows that. Um literally everybody. Literally everybody. You better be listening. If not, I mean, just subscribe and just delete the episode every week. I'd just download it. Make sure you're downloading it, though. Download it and then delete it. But give us a five-star review over there, Kyle and I. We work very hard and, uh, well, we don't work very hard. We work hard enough <laughs> and we love what we do. Um, but we work hard at getting you guys a good show every week. Uh, so give us a listen or download or a rating or none of the above. I don't care. <laughs> He but works I, very hard. I don't work hard. Yeah. I don't care. Just well, yeah, download. all of the above and none of the above. Uh, no, I just um, you know whatever. I'm gonna not be sappy, but uh, I'm just happy to be here and talking with you guys and hanging out. So uh, if you want to know where to find me, just listen to a, the end of a board of the video games episode, and you there can you find go. me. That sounds good. That sounds good. And you can chat with us each and every day if you're so inclined over on our Discord. Head over to PSVG blog. You can click on the Discord banner and join us and all the different things we talk about on a daily basis that kind of breaks up the monotony of the work day or just life in general. Mm. We'd love to have you and talk about life and stuff and games and movies and Donnie tormenting his wife with a Chucky doll and all sorts of things. Caro buying stuff she shouldn't buy. Like you always. Know, like always. <laughs> but she won't buy a second Switch, so she stops being mad at her husband. I think she no. likes to be mad at her husband, which makes sense because I got a wife and I know what that's like. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I will say uh, as you get folks are listening to this episode, um, Caro and I are appearing on an episode of Nintendo nostalgia together oh. in a video game trivia show. So that ought to be interesting. We're representing team PSVG against team Nintendo nostalgia. They will have a person kind of hosting and giving us questions. So we'll see how that goes. Um, could go really well, but I don't want to be too cocky about it. Cause then I'll probably just lose terribly, but <laughs> uh, I have more experience than I think all three of them combined as far as how long I've been gaming versus them. So uh, it should be all good. And I got Carol for all the weird stuff and Japanese names that she remembers. So I think, well, I think we'll be all right. <laughs> we'll be all right. Um, so thank you everybody for listening. As always, we do appreciate it. Uh, for tuning in, telling a friend, hopefully. But as always, we ask that you never stop gaming. This has been a PSVG production.
Any music, sound effects, or the like is owned by their respective copyright holders. No infringement is intended. The views expressed in this production are those of the individual contributor and may not necessarily reflect PSVG. This production may not be repurposed, reused, or redistributed without the express written consent of PSVG. PSVG is powered by patrons at patreon.com slash PSVG. Become a patron to get special perks, including access to exclusive content. <laughs>